Hey everyone, it's Jamie with the Outer Rim. Thanks for stopping by. You know, sometimes when you're trying to make a Star Wars prop, you're looking for something unusual, you gotta think outside the hen house. And I'm gonna explain what that means next. I like to look through farm and ranch stores when I travel in rural areas. They always have unusual stuff that you won't find in your big box hardware store. Like this, and this, and this. I came across these chicken feeders and thought, you know, that would make a cool in-universe sconce light. So I picked up a few different types and started brainstorming. They cost less than $5 and slide open for easy access. I decided to make a wood base for them to add a little interest. I cut two pieces of half inch MDF, 15 inches by six inches. Then I clamped them together and used some scraps to drill out the corners using a hole saw. I set up my router with a roundover bit and eased all the edges. I did a quick test fit, then used my step bit to drill an access hole for the wire harness. I used Mod Podge to seal all the surfaces. My props are used outdoor in winter, so I took the extra step of adding a coat of dry lock. All right, so for this prop, um, I found this really cool new kind of paint from Modern Masters. It's a metal oxidizing paint. I've never tried this before and I'm really excited about giving it a shot. So we'll learn about it together. So this metal effects paint is a four step process. You start with the iron oxidizing paint. It actually has little metal particles in it. And once you get that painted on, you will use this little spritzer here to spray a rust activator on the paint. Um, this will actually cause it to rust rapidly so you don't have to wait for nature to take its course. Um, before you do all that though, they do recommend that you use their primer. And the reason is this chemical is pretty strong. The acid um, in the activator will attack your wood or metal that your object that you're painting. So, and it'll pull up tannins and stuff that'll ruin the effect. So their special primer kind of blocks these uh, chemicals from penetrating through and getting to your piece. And then to finish it off, you'll use their uh, permacoat, which is a clear coat. Um, and it's also a little different than other clear coats you might've used it actually freezes the process and locks in the rust at whatever level you put that on. Otherwise, it'll continue to oxidize over time. So once you get the look you want, you kind of lock it in with the permacoat. I gave everything two coats of primer per the instructions. Then two coats of the iron oxidizing paint. After it dried, it was finally time to spray it with the activator and wait for the magic to happen. Slowly but surely, the rust began to appear. I repeated this process several times to get the level of rust that I wanted. I performed a similar process on the two backing boards using both rust and patina effects. I cut and glued some diffuser pieces from an LED light panel sheet. I got it Tap Plastics. I bought this little light kit here. It's got four one foot LED light strips in it with connectors. So I'm gonna put two in each light. So for example, here's a Here's two of the little, here's the little one foot strips right here. I drilled some holes in the board for the mounting hardware. And it was finally time to assemble and see how they look.
These will make a nice addition to my Star Wars display. I learned a new technique for making a rust finish and I'll definitely be using this again in the future. If you like this, please remember to like and subscribe and come back for part two where I'll show you how I replicated this light from Galaxy's Edge. Because in the outer rim, anything is possible.